Okay, and thus I can seamlessly come to our next presentation, Digital Sovereignty in the Cloud. And Andreas Wien of Bachelor uh, AG, and apart from initiatives like Gaia X, there are also quite a number of European and German cloud providers. But the U.S. tech companies mainly push the cloud services, and the question of sovereignty of data in the cloud could so far not be satisfactorily answered. That is how a dialogue and an equal footing with public authorities could look like. This is what we're going to hear now. Thank you very much for the introductory words. I hope you can hear me and also from my side. I would like to wish you a wonderful afternoon. And in Hamburg, the sun is shining. And I would like to thank Univention and the whole organizational team. And to me, this type of presentation still uh, requires a bit of getting used to it, a complete virtual event. And I also hope that in the nearer future, uh, we will be able to meet again, though I think we will probably have to live with hybrid formats. I will give a short uh, excursion because Bechtle and Bench, how does that belong together? In the education sector, uh, we had UCS at school and Bechtle at school. These two portfolios fit very well together. And based upon this good collaboration, we've had different projects in the system houses nationally and also at Hamburg. And I'm really very happy to present this. And that was a data port for the Phoenix project, where we as general contractor have Univention, Capuni, and others. So we advise and consult and support jointly. What is this? Well, it's an online-based collaboration platform, and one or the other might have heard of this. So all this on open source basis, and for the operations, there will be a scalability and highly performing platform is required. And that could be a cloud. And in this project, this should be a digitally sovereign cloud. And this then closes the circle to the topic today, that is digital sovereignty in the cloud. I'm Andreas Wien, and I'm uh, uh, responsible for data port at Bechtle in Hamburg. Let's have a short look at the agenda. Well, first of all, I would like to start with a definition and maybe also a bit of differentiation. What is digital sovereignty? Then we will have a look. Is the cloud a economic imperative? And does uh, a digital sovereign cloud exist? Does the debate change the offer? And what can Bechtle contribute? And then offering an outlook. So let's start. And I really must say, start with an attempt. It is an attempt of getting closer to the definition of digital sovereignty. And I looked at the Bitcom guideline. And then this symbol of a balance is very appropriate. Because on the one hand, we have the digital dependency. That is, others decide what we are doing. We don't have any capabilities for key technologies. We are only dependent of actors in other parts of the world. And we cannot even shape the technologies that we use. On the other hand, we've got digital independence, autarky. We do everything ourselves. We do the technologies ourselves. We prefer our own technologies, even if other solutions might even be better. And the balance, well, this is digital sovereignty. That is, we have the capability of acting autonomously, and uh, key technologies and platforms uh, allow us and give us the capabilities of being up to date with technology. And we can freely uh, decide for our own solutions and also viable options. To conclude, we can say at the core, digital sovereignty is the possibility to have an independent digital self-determination. Now coming to the cloud and also whether the cloud is a must. Well, we could say in uh, the rumor in the cloud, there are so many different terms that are being used 
the fund that is a buzzword for the debate and has been for many years. So we have a, a shadow IT. We also have a pressure, a scale of pressure, also a loss and lack of specialists. Then there's this highly uh, increasing data volume and also the process scaling and also the flexibility use as something that we would have to mention here. So is the cloud a economic imperative? So here we have to very clearly see yes and no. Why yes and no? Well, because you have to look at the overall costs of the cloud. That is, the migration to the cloud can lead to certain dependencies. And a very important point are the subsequent costs if you look at exit scenarios. So migration to the cloud is always easy, but migration back to a different cloud, or out of the cloud to a different cloud is different. And also the data loss and transfer is something that would have to be perceived. Long term price development is uncertain because there's consolidation in the market and what will come remains to be seen. And then there are these hidden costs of egress traffic that is total data transfer out of the cloud. That is what I mentioned in migration. Many cloud providers advertise and say that ingress traffic is free of charge, but aggress traffic well, there you probably have to have a closer look at the small print. And then there is the uh, illegal access of third states, which is an incalculable risk. And this leads to the current debate. And this comes back to, or leads back to the objectives of this presentation. So does a digitally sovereign cloud exist? And again, it is a yes or no, clear yes or no, because any type of uh, outsourcing of data has or bears a non-defined residual risk, and even the biggest U.S. cloud uh, uh, suppliers, Azure, AWS, Google, none of this is GDPR conform and does not offer a digital sovereign cloud. And the European Court has also supported this by not accepting the EU's privacy shield, so that U.S. cloud suppliers, independently of the location of the stored data, do not protect against access of U.S. Uh, US authorities and there's no legal help. And even the standard um, clauses uh, are not helping because when the European Court really canceled these possibilities, there were so many saying, oh, the standard contract clauses are outdated. They don't help us. But what does this mean? Because so far one would think, is there a digitally sovereign cloud? One would say no. So why is it a yes and no? Well, there are European suppliers and we'll come to them in a moment. But first, we will have a look at the topic of whether the current debate is changing the offer. And here we've got a clear yes, because digital sovereignty has quickly developed to the top one priority topic. And even the uh, data protection offices of the Federation and also of the states have positioned themselves. It's still a bit uneven, but this is a topic that is very much discussed. And the large US hyperscalers are adapting to requirements, so they're container-based uh, on-prem solutions. And European suppliers are gaining in importance and are slowly but surely developing a competitive office. Gaia-X is a synonymous for this new understanding of oneself. And also for SaaS-only solutions, there are also on-prem uh, alternatives. So, for example, as an alternative to Office 365. So, what can Bashley uh, contribute? Well, Bashley is a multi-cloud service provider and obviously with a view and a focus on digital sovereignty. What does that mean? Well, we speak with customers in a neutral way uh, when we talk about cloud and always thinking about on-prem solutions. We've got a large network of consultancy, especially when it comes to call for tenders and projects. and what is very important. So we do not come from the clouds. We come from a different business. But of course, we have a network where we can advise and this neutrally to uh, manufacturers. We promote sovereign clouds, for example, HPI School Cloud. And we also have a critical dialogue with established US hyperscalers. We also speak about uh, requirements that they have to fulfill if they want to play a role in the public sector in Germany. 
Germany. And we are also the partner from first hour or the, from the very start of European suppliers. And a good example is quite cloud made in Germany, Ionos, especially, and Ionos are partners from the very beginning. Ionos also is based on an open course stack and open source stack and has its main uh, headquarters in Germany. They've got computing centers in Frankfurt, London, Las Vegas, and New, Las Vegas and New Jersey. And Univention, Bechtel, and Ionis, they are all partners together in the project of Phoenix that I mentioned earlier on. Let's have a short outlook. Well, one point is certain. Well, everything is quite uncertain, but the design of your own cloud solution is decisive if you want to answer or when you want to answer the question whether you're digitally sovereign. And I would say that the location, Europe, is for the time being a good and safe solution. Basically, can support you and can also advise you in a hybrid world. And last but not least, the digital change is unstoppable. Thank you very much for your attention.